Hello and welcome to this series of instructional videos on LEGO Mindstorms EV3 for Labner Camps. I'm Jack Hollingsworth and along with Brad Johnson we are presenting and producing these videos. So this is the second installment in our six-part series of the introduction to the EV3 brick for counselors and staff. Um, this will be on the hardware behind the uh, behind the system. So all the uh, all the all the main physical components. The, the rest will, uh, the rest of the series will deal with software. Anyhow, what you see before you right now is the main uh, representative uh, selection of the various motors, bricks, and sensors that you're going to get with an EV3 kit. Uh, granted, you do get two of these and two of these, but this is basically a representation of everything that you're going to get when you open up your kits come the first week of camp. So, uh, you have your, this is your main programmable brick right here, this is your EV3 brick. Uh, this is your large motor, this is your medium motor. You get two of these large ones and one of these medium ones. Uh, and then you have four different types of sensors that come uh, with the educational kits. Um, the software that you get at home, uh, that we're probably going to be using, at least that we use in these demonstrations, is the Home Edition. They do not include the ultrasound sensor right over here. They have a different type of sensor in its stead. So, uh, this is uh, the software for this you're going to end up having to download separately, but that's okay. We're going to show you how to do that. So, uh, the four types of sensors that come with the kit are the ultrasound sensor, the gyroscope sensor, the touch sensor, and the, uh, the color sensor. We're going to get back into the sensors a little later. Okay, so this is the EV3 brick itself. Uh, you'll notice it's slightly different from the NXT uh, brick that came before it. The, that's what the, uh, the introductory classes use, so the advanced programming classes use this EV3. Um, it is relatively well updated from its predecessor. It now has uh, four different motor ports up here. You've got A, B, C, and D as compared to just A, B, and C previously. And you have on the other side, you have four sensor input ports. One, two, three, and four. With LEGO, numbered ports are input ports, uh, lettered ports are output ports. You also have a, uh, a data a data in port. This is for downloading PCs, for downloading programs from your computer. Um, and then on the side over here, you have a USB slot and an SD card. These are used for data logging, which I don't believe we're going to cover in this series. I don't believe we're going to, uh, it's part of the curriculum at camp here, but um, it's, it's useful to know about them. Now, uh, on the front here, you have your main display, which is up here. And then you have, instead of the, uh, the, th the, the, the bi-directional pad that you had previously with the back button, you have a full directional pad. You've got up, down, left, and right, and then an enter button. Uh, you'll notice it chirped at me. I'll, I'll tell you why later. And then you have a back button up here instead of down below as usual. So this moves you down. It does not take you out to the previous menu. That is a big difference from the NXT bricks. Now, these things normally, oh dear, I dropped it. Uh, these things normally take uh, six AA batteries, like, like so. But because this is an educational set, we have, ta-da, a rechargeable battery here. Now this, you can just simply, you take it, you clip it in, much the same way you did the other side. It'll lock into place, and you're basically good to go. It's a good idea to charge them up before you start, but, um, yeah, it's definitely a good idea to charge them up before you start, actually. Definitely do that, because they don't come with much battery installed on them. So, the charging jack looks like this. Plugs in right down here at the bottom. Clips right in there. When it actually is charging, when I've got the, the outlet actually plugged in, uh, you're going to have one of two lights here. Um, this one here means batteries... This one over here means batteries charging. It'll, it'll light up amber, and the other one will light up green to tell you that it's done. So... In short, that is how all this thing works. Now let's flip it over and turn it on. In order to turn it on, you press the gray button right here in the center. It's going to turn red and the screen will say Mindstorms starting. So you just have to wait for it to start. It takes a couple seconds, unlike the NXT used to, which used to be pretty quick at loading. This one does take a couple seconds. So, And now we are in. You will notice on the screen that 
we have four different menus. By default, it puts you in this menu on the far left, which is the most recently accessed programs menu. At this point, you can use the left and right arrows down here to navigate between the four menus. The first one is most recently accessed programs. The second is various projects, various groups of programs that you've downloaded to the brick. I have, it appears I have two on here, and then a third that just comes with the, uh, comes with the kit. Uh, here we have various different ways to um, see what the ports, various ports are doing. You have port view, you've got motor control, there's IR control if you want to uh, use an infrared remote to uh, control this, and there is uh, a brick programming option down here that we're not going to get into because using the software on the computer is much, much more powerful. And then the last tab over here is settings, and you can mess around with a, a number of settings. So that's basically all there is to the software. You, you go up and down with the up and down arrows. If I press into something, like let's say I want to open this program called Logic, I can press the enter button, go into it, and now I can run my program Logic Test inside by pushing again on the button. I, pu I press it again. It makes some noise at me. And if I want to exit the program before it's done running, I press the back button up here. Normally the program will just finish and it'll revert right back to this screen here, but that one was on an infinite loop and wouldn't have ended. So in order to get back out of this menu, you press the back button again. In order to turn the brick off, you press the back button again, it'll give you a power, uh, a power option, and you can give it the X and the check. Go over to the check, press enter, and it shuts down. All right, so this is our first sensor. This is the touch sensor. Uh, it has a little nub out here in the front that you can push in or out. This will change the, uh, the, st the state of the sensor, how much electrical resistance is going to go back. Um, on the back, you've got your standard um, plug, so you can plug that in. Click, it'll click right in. Um, that's basically all there is to the hardware of the touch sensor. Uh, after this, we have the color sensor, which looks an awful lot like the touch sensor, with the exception that it has a little light, two little lights actually, here in the front. Uh, same thing, clicks in the back. And this is used to, it can not only measure ambient light levels, it can also measure um, uh, and detect various colors. After the uh, color sensor, we might as well go to the last one that looks very similar to it. This is the gyroscopic sensor. You'll notice it has no external sort of features like the other two did. Um, this, however, will respond to rotations around the axis of this dot. So turning it this way will do things. Turning it this way will not do things. And last but not least, we have the one different sensor. This is the, this is the ultrasound sensor. This is not an infrared sensor. It is ultrasound, as you can tell from the grills in the front here. Uh, infrared does not have that. And it is significantly bulkier, but it is uh, very useful in telling distances. You, as, as you'll see later in this video, you can tell distances using this thing. You can figure out how far the robot is from the front of the sensor to an obstacle. Mindstorms has two types of motors that come with the EV3 set. You have your large motor here and your medium motor here. There is no small motor. You get two of these large motors with your kit. They're very useful for uh, dealing with heavy lifting situations or situations where you need to drive something. And then your medium motor, of which you only get one, is better for, um, for grasping and, and moving lighter things. So if, for example, if you had a robotic arm, you would use one of these to turn it around, and you would use one of these to operate the, uh, operate the claw that is gonna grab and manipulate things. Both of these motors have built-in rotation sensors. That is why it, they are very, very precise. Um, generally, LEGO claims plus or minus, I think, two or three degrees. Uh, your mileage may vary, of course, but um, LEGO claims them to be very accurate. In order to help them stay as accurate as possible, it is vitally important that you not crank back and forth on these motors an awful lot. Um, that will uh, wear out the gear train that drives these things, and it will cause damage to those sensors. So please do be careful there. 
um, it, it's nice to have motors that function very, very well, so uh, it's up to us to take care of the stuff we've got. So that's basically all there is about the motors themselves. They clip in in the back here with your standard phone jack port. Um, beyond that, there isn't very much to them. At this point, I'd like to talk about port view, which is something I may or may not have mentioned earlier. You go over to the uh, the multiple, the six little dots here, um, and you see port view is your first option. You press enter. This will allow you to see what the uh, the brick is currently receiving as input or output. Uh, for each of the eight different ports. You have four input ports and four output ports. Um, now, the output ports we're going to look at first. We're going to look at the motors because even though it's not currently outputting anything, the motors have rotation sensors in them so we can see how far a motor has turned. Alright, so I've just popped a large motor like this into port A here and you notice there's a little zero up there now instead of three lines. That's telling me that the motor is hooked up. Now if I take it and I rotate it with my fingers, which I don't recommend doing incidentally, you notice it changes. It goes to 106, etc, etc. If I press the up button from here, because it's currently on number one, press the up button, go up here, it's now giving me a screen that is telling me that I have a large motor in port A and that I have turned it positive 263 degrees. If I want it to go backwards, I can push it the other way and then I get smaller numbers and I can even have negative numbers. So this is telling me how far the, uh, the motor has rotated in degrees. Normally this is an output port, you're not going to be getting input. But uh, because these motors have built-in rotation sensors, you can get input. This is really valuable for measuring how far a robot needs to move if you ever need to do that. Alright, uh, the medium motor works exactly the same way, so I'll just plug that in for you very quickly, show you. It'll be much harder to turn, but you, you get the general idea. See? Different, different screen, medium motor. I can't turn this to save my life, so not going to bother. Um, that's basically it for the two types of motors. Actually, it is it. There isn't any more. So now I've unplugged the wire and th there's nothing up there. I'm going to plug now, I'm going to go down to port 1 here at the bottom, plug it in, plug the same wire in, look at the screen. Uh, and I'll, I'll just start, with, start arbitrarily with a, uh, with a touch sensor. We'll plug in the touch sensor, go down, take a look, and you'll see it says 1 touch. It's telling you there's a touch sensor in port 1. Um, I press it, it goes to 1, I release it, it goes to 0. 1, 0, 1, 0, like that. So that's how your touch sensor works. It gives you one of two values. Uh, let's go with the uh, color sensor now. Clip, clip that in. Tells me I have one unknown and now it's telling me color. Now I have different options here. I didn't have options previously. Uh, with the uh, with the touch sensor because there's only one thing you can do with the touch sensor. Now if I press the center button, I can choose reflected color, ambient color, or reflected light, ambient light, not really color, or I can choose color. I'm going to pick ambient light for just, for, just for the moment here, and I, I can point it down at the table. I get a low reading, 1, 2 percent. I can point it at the light over my shoulder. I get 30, 31 percent, which is normal for indoors in a relatively dimly lit space like this. I don't have any super bright lights going on. If I cover it up with my thumb, I get basically nil. Um, I can go back and take a look. We can look at reflections. And right now it's, it's just being held in space, so no reflection. Um, I can shine it at the mat and now I get a number. I get, I get in the low 40s. Uh, it's telling me this mat is, is um, dealing with low 40 percent reflection of light. That's basically all for the color sensor. Uh, the, the color option for this is going to give you a variety of numbers. I don't know what those numbers mean, but you can use them later on uh, in your program. So we're going to plug in the gyroscope sensor now, and we're going to look at it, and it's going to tell me I've turned just a couple degrees. Now if I spin this around its axis, you'll notice the number goes up. If I turn it, um, what is that? That's clockwise, and it goes down if I turn it counterclockwise. If you ask me, this is backwards, but you know, that's just what it is. This, this so it's currently telling me angle in degrees. I can press enter. I can also do a rate of change, so you do degrees per second, where if I move it f back and forth very quickly, it gives me large numbers. If I move it really slowly, it gives me small numbers. So, 
you have your two options. You can do degrees or degrees per second with this. And then last but not least, we have the ultrasound sensor. So I'm going to clip that in. You'll notice it lights up. And we can look at it uh, in distance in centimeters, or we can look at distance in inches, or we can have a listen, which is good for claps. So like if I set this thing down or I snap in front of it, eh, that's not really working. You need a louder noise, but go, go back. And yeah, that's basically it. You, you can look at distance too. I might as well show you that while I'm at it. Yeah, distance in centimeters, looking at 255 is its way of saying there's nothing in front of me that I can see. I put something in front of it, it's now telling me five centimeters from it to my finger, which is not super, super accurate, but you know, that's okay. Um, I think these things are generally accurate to within a couple centimeters. So that's basically all for the, um, for port sensing, port viewing. And that basically concludes this uh, segment of the, um, the series. So uh, feel free to uh, email us if you have any questions. You can direct them to Aaron, the, uh, the, the tech instructor. Um, and uh, good luck with your programming.